I have in front of me math boxes from your journal, page 196. We did the other side together last week. And so I hope that you gave these a try a little bit on your own, but there are some tricky things in here, so I think it's good for us to go through these and make sure you're understanding. As I'm looking at box number one, writing four fractions equivalent to one-fourth. Now, you could have um, gotten out your fraction cards and held some things up and probably found some things that um, you, might help you. Here, I'm going to do this a different way today. I want to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to double. Remember, we, I think we talked about this a little bit last week. We, I'm going to double one-fourth on the top and bottom. Um, if I have one two times, I have two. And if I have four two times, I have eight. Two-eighths is actually equivalent to one-fourth. All right, now, what if I took that and I doubled it again? Two-eighths would actually be equivalent to four out of 16. Did you follow what I did there? And four times two is eight, and 16 times two is 32. Oh my gosh, eight out of 32 would be equal to one-fourth as well. And then if I did it one more time, you guys, 8 times 2 is 16, and 32 twice is 64. I just used some multiplying to come up with some equivalent names. I didn't need to grab my fraction cards. I don't even think I would have found four examples in that deck. And so I, I wanted to just show you this technique because it works. And that would be a quick way to um, think about some equivalent fractions. All right. Do you remember how many hours are in one whole day? We have 24 hours in a day. That means 12 hours would only be a portion of a day. And I know that 12 is half of 24 because 12 plus 12 makes 24. So 12 hours would be one half of our day. Hmm. How many weeks would we have if we had 21 days? Well, let's think what, about what we know about weeks. How many days are in one week? That's right, there are seven days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Seven days. If I had 21 days, well that's, hmm, seven days in one week. 14 days in two weeks, right? Seven times two. Well, seven times three is 21. So if I have 21 days, I have three weeks. How many minutes are in one half of an hour? Well, let's start by saying how many minutes are in one full hour? And that answer is 60. If there are 60 minutes in one hour, how many minutes in a half an hour? What is half of 60? Should be 30 minutes. Now, 15 minutes. Mm hmm. For this one, I'm going to draw a circle. I think of time sometimes in a circle because of a clock. And I'm going to divide it into four parts. Do you know why I'm doing that? I know that there are 15 minutes in each of these four sections. 15 plus 15 makes 30. That's half of the hour. There's 30 over here. 30 plus 30 makes 60. Makes the whole hour. So 15 minutes would be what fractional part? of an hour. It would actually be one-fourth or one-quarter of that hour, wouldn't it? One-fourth. All right, going on to number three. If I wanted to have an equal chance of taking out a circle or a square, well, what would I do? There are four squares in there. I want an equal chance. So in order to be equal, I better put four circles in there as well. Now the chances are equal. Draw a set of 12 X's. Circle nine of them. What fraction of the whole set are nine X's? Now, I'm, I, we could go all the way across. I'm going to do an array, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12. How did I know that would work out so nicely? Because I know that four threes makes 12. And when you start having those multiplication facts playing in your head because you've learned them so well, your brain starts thinking like that. And then you can figure it out pretty quickly. I hope you're starting to get there. So I have an array of four times three. That Those are my 12. Oh, and I drew circles instead of X's. So I hope you'll forgive me. Circle, nine of them. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. What fraction of the whole set are the nine X's? Now, there are a couple different names for this, actually. We could call it nine twelfths, and we would be correct. Do any of you see another name that would be equivalent that uses smaller numbers? What if we called each one of these a part? One, two, three, four. What if we divided this 12 into fourths? How many fourths did I circle? One fourth, two fourths, three out of four parts. I would have to say that three fourths is equivalent to nine twelfths, three out of four parts. Going on. Oh, we're going to solve with parentheses. Remember the rule. Do what's in parentheses first. I know that 2 times 9 is 18 with a 0 there. Plus 7 would give me 187. I hope that's one of my choices. Oh, there we go. Oh, use your calculator. Pretend the division key is broken. Guess what? I don't have a calculator right here. Let's see if I can do it without a calculator. <laughs> But do you uh, pretend that the division key is broken? So I'll, I'll talk about this and pretend I can't divide, okay? Christopher and Rochelle are packing 212 cookies in boxes. Each box holds 20 cookies. How many full boxes can they pack? Now, if I had a calculator, I would put in 212 divided by 20. But we can't use the division key. So I can't divide. Hmm, what am I going to do? Could I do some adding? Could I draw a picture? I'm going to just make a note on some blank paper here. 212 cookies and 20 in a box. All right, how many boxes of 20? If I had two boxes, I would have 40. 60, 80, 20, 40, 60, 80, I'm counting by 20s, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200, hmm. Oh boy, if I do another box, that would be 220, and I only have 212 cookies. Now, let's go back and see what they asked us again. I like to reread things and always be sure that I'm, I'm answering according to what the question's asking. Each box holds 20 cookies. How many full boxes can they pack? That means we can't just stick some leftover cookies in a box, can we? We, we have to probably just have some cookies that aren't going to go in a box. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200. That was our cutoff because if we went another one here, it would be too many. How many full boxes did we pack? Two, four, six, eight, ten boxes. Now, could we check that with some multiplication? Hmm. Well... 20 times 10, if we did it this way, because I haven't shown you double digit layering yet and we will get there. Not this week though. Well, two times one is two and you add those two zeros, that would be 200. And that, that makes sense with our math. So there you go, 10 boxes full of cookies, 10 full boxes. And this completes your math for the day. 
I hope that you learned a few new things today. We had quite a bit of good, good heavy content, so I hope that helped. Thanks.